because the brilliant Woody Harrelson, Andy Serkis and Louisa Harland are in the building. Yes, indeed. Anyway, next, our next guests are three stars of stage and screen. They've made us laugh, they've made us cry, they've transported us to magical worlds, but now they take into the stage together in a brand new comedy all about acting. Please welcome Andy Serkis, Louisa Harland and Woody Harrelson. Yes. <laughs> Guys, love it to see it. Now, I'm going to try and do this. There are connections between the three of you. I'll try my best. Louisa, you were in Woody's film. Yeah. Correct. Woody, Andy, you've both acted together, Planet of the Apes. But, Andy, this is the first time working with Louisa. That's right. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, yeah. bang on, bang on. I mean, look, so, so uh, your first gig uh, together as a three, a week from Curtain Up, how are you feeling ahead of it? <sighs> Oh. Yeah. Theatre, theatre, theatre. <laughs> yeah. No, it's great. It's fantastic. We're having a ball in the rehearsal room. We are, we are. We are. It's a good laugh. It's yeah. really good laugh. Is, is, is it, like, on a scale of like one to ten, like, kind of getting into those, like, pre, pre-match nerves, I guess, how, how are they, Andy? Oh, Eleven. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Eleven. Yeah, yeah. Eleven. No, I mean, tonight, uh, yes, exactly. One week away, yeah. So nervous. Well, we yeah, should say, nervous. it's called Ulster American. Um, Louisa, you play a writer. Yeah. Now, this was right. This was written by a good friend of yours and a co-star in Dairy Girls as well, David yeah. Ireland. Yeah. Um, so you should probably be the one to tell us all about it. OK, well, it is a play uh, set the night before the rehearsals begin. And it's about a American Hollywood actor, played by me, no, I'm joking, played by Woody, <laughs> uh, English director and an Irish playwright. And um, it's a night before rehearsals and things don't go according to plan. I think that's Ooh, the most yeah. I'll say on that. That's a nice little tease. But, and, and Woody, it's been, been, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, nearly 20 years since you were last on stage in the 18, UK. 18 for me, 20 for... This fella. 18 to 22. Uh, I mean, what was it about this one that, that kind of, you know, I want to jump jump back on? Well, I, I, I read it, I think it was around August or September or something, but uh, I thought phenomenal writing, phenomenal. David Ireland, what a what a writer. Seriously good. And then I was like, but of course, uh, anyway, I had stuff kind of planned out, but then the strike happened, and then because the strike continued, it became evident that mm -hmm. it might be possible Mm. So we searched around, you know, all the West End theaters were taken. And anyway, I, I wanted both these guys in it and uh, they came on it. And then we found uh, Riverside Studios. And so just miraculously, we get to be here to get on stage together in a week's time. <laughs> 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 um, would you play your character, the leader man, as kind of an obnoxious character? Which, do you know, I'm going to mention this. I which don't is... see him as obnoxious. No. But okay, I mean, if you do. But this is uh, what's <laughs> completely different to you because I love that you've just taken your shoes off and now in your socks. I love that. Oh, Very yeah. relaxed on live telly. Yeah. They're so good. I I'm, like a, it. I'm a relaxed yeah. uh, I, I a guy who likes comfort over style. And why not? Yeah. I'm so um, here for that. <laughs> I just thought I'd mention that because oh, it's just. Know, <laughs> but you know when you get a script and you read it, when when you read a character, does somebody you know pop into your mind, and then do they become the basis for the character that you sort of build? That doesn't usually happen. Uh, in, in this case, I thought of Andy. Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> in, in this case, you know, there's a lot. This this guy's had a, a great deal of success as an actor, and he's come into this situation, and uh, he he's a provocateur. <laughs> well, I, I'm kind of pro a provocateur. I say things that I mean. I can't tell you how many times I've seen my kids just roll their eyes. Like, oh my god, I can't. Believe <laughs> you know. I, but I, I'm not a provocateur on the level of uh, Jay, my character. But so I just started thinking in ways like he's a lot like me. Many things uh, connect. So I don't know. I'm, I'm more the role model for this character. <laughs> <laughs> Make it easy for myself. I don't yeah. have to do as much work. Perfect. Nice. Right. Um, Louisa, you play a writer in this. Yeah. But do you, you know, when you're acting, do you like ad-libbing? Do you throw some of your own stuff in normally? Or does it depend on the script, depend on the writer? I do, but when the writing's so good, I think you don't have to. And um, David's writing is so fantastic. 
Yeah, but you're you're heading. Am I right? I think you're heading straight back on stage as soon as this is this is over. Yes, with the same director. I'm with doing, the same director. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm doing Long Day's Journey in tonight on the West End with um, Brian Cox. Oh, Brian Cox. Yeah. Oh, I mean that's going to be incredible. Hey, well, look, yeah. Ulster American opens at Riverside Studios from the fourth of December. Now the three of the guys uh, they're staying with us. Uh, we have plenty more that we actually want to ask you about. Uh, but in the meantime, we think you will absolutely love this next film, uh, all in the theatre. Yes. Um, Woody, how much you know when you were younger, when you were acting? How much did that influence you? How much confidence did it give you at that age? Yeah, that's why I think this is such a great program, such mm. a cool thing. Uh, that Maggie's doing, but I, it, it helped me a lot. I mean, I think I, I was not, uh, I was not the model child. <laughs> right. I, I, anyway, I, I think it kind of helped move me in a, in a whole different direction. And uh, yeah, it made a big difference in my life, obviously. Yeah. I, I don't know, I'd probably be a truck driver or something right now, I don't know. But you're here on the one shoe with no shoes on. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm putting my it. shoes back. No, please don't. Please right don't. Right please right don't. Right okay, right keep them on. Would you please do not? Nice. The, the best compliment you could give us is that you're that comfortable. Yeah, I love it. So um, <laughs> Andy, watching that as well, it is pretty inspiring stuff. Yeah, amazing. I mean, just like to get to get the chance. I mean, that's the power of that is the power of theatre to bring people together to, you know, to walk in someone else's shoes to, you know, step outside of your own situation and to be able to collectively come together and make something yeah. is is an amazingly powerful thing to do and a really healing thing to do and 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 they look like they're just having such a great time you you know coming alive it's so infectious it's, isn't it, it you want to go and see it don't you yeah, yeah. actually yeah. Yeah. Really no, I do. Yeah, yeah. yeah yeah and we have to talk of course about dairy girls <laughs> everybody loved it it's been four years it's flown isn't it since yeah. it finished yeah what was it like filming that last couple of scenes and was it as much fun on set as it looked, you know, when we were watching it. Yeah, it truly was. It truly was. And um, yeah, so lucky to be a part of that. So lucky to be a part of that show. It was, yeah, incredible. Amazing. Uh, uh, Andy, look, we, we know um, you from so many massive blockbuster movies. You are kind of Mr. Blockbuster when it comes to you've been You've done the DC <laughs> universe, the Marvel universe, Star Wars as well. Any more I'm missing? Uh, Lord of the Rings, obviously. Uh, Planet, Planet of the, of the Apes. Apes. And then, but then also, we were talking about it, and apparently your favourite childhood film was nothing like a big blockbuster. It was quite different. What was that? Well, The Sound of Music. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was quite a big blockbuster. Would you I say... I'm saying more it says, was there laser guns in it? Not really. <laughs> but, yeah, no. <laughs> no. But, you know, I mean, it's a, got adventure. It's got, you know... There's a, Julie yeah. Andrews. It's got Julie Andrews. Yeah, Julie Andrews, yeah, exactly. With but why, was, hero was, power. Love with the, why yeah. was that film so big for you as a, as a child? I think, I think it's yeah. just it's just that such an amazing musical. And, you know, there, there I can't think of another musical. Well, I mean, Cabaret is... You know, we were talking about Cabaret as being one of our favourite. But, yeah. but that has got so many brilliant songs that yeah. you just... And also, I actually, I have to mention at this point that uh, my, my mum's funeral, that the, the, yeah. the Hills Were Alive for the Sound of Music was was what was playing. And actually, oh, through the church windows, at the moment at the, when the music came on, the skies lit up and we all fell about laughing. Oh. And it was... It was, it was, it was yeah. Oh, see, yeah. I've got goosebumps Happy now. Happy yeah. memories. That's lovely. See, yeah. I knew I liked you, Andy Circus, but I like you even more now <laughs> after the sound of music thing. I know people come up still and talk to you about Gollum. That's the connection that people make with you, isn't it? Well, and you just, don't... You d no, no, not just, but you don't <laughs> mind, do you? you? You like that, that people want to talk to you and you're proud of that role. Of course, yeah. Um, yeah. Woody, what, what role is the one that you're most proud of that you've played? Most proud of? Ah, uh, that's... Very hard to say. I, I will say, I think my favorite movie I've done is the last movie I did called Champions. I, I had more fun and I just love the vibe of that movie. Yeah. Reminds me a lot of your movie that just came out, uh, or it's okay. coming out. Uh, the Next Goal Wins. Next Goal Wins. Yeah. We just saw it. Yeah. So there's, a lot, there's a great vibe, the yeah. chemistry, the. Anyway, I, I love that experience. I, I, to be fair, Champions was absolutely fantastic. I loved it. Mm. Oh, thank you. Really, really great. Going to put it on my list, Woody. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, still to come, Ian. Yeah. Now then, let's welcome to our very packed sofa. I mean, we've had to add an extension. <laughs> <laughs> Ian Sterling and Laura Whitmore. Yes. 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 Oh, welcome.
welcome. Look, you're jammed in like sardines there. But there we are, it's cosy. This nice. is the oddest group of people I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> How did these guys meet? <laughs> <laughs> Only on the one show would this happen. We'd like well, to announce exactly. our new band. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There we exactly. go. New pop the band. Woodies. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Our first single's called Shoes Off. <laughs> Why not? Um, you've got a new podcast. Yes. I love the title, Murder They Wrote. Mm. Da, na, 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 na. Um, but <laughs> sing more, sing please sing no, more. No, no, I'm not allowed. You can't. Don't sing more. <laughs> No, do sing more. Stop. I want that to be the hey, rest I of it. I want no one. Sorry, sorry. You're not allowed, not allowed. I actually can't. No. You're right. Um, but this is a true crime podcast. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now then, first things first. Why did you want to do it together? First question, why? <laughs> just, just why in general. It's Because I feel like there's not enough couple podcasts out there. Do you know what I mean? No. Um, we actually, we were asked a few times about doing a podcast yeah. together. Yeah. And we didn't really want to. Yeah. And no, <laughs> and then we, we but we both just love that, that's our thing we do in the evening. Like do you know that when you sit and you try and you go on the telly and you just spend age with your partner, like trying to work out what you want to watch and you yeah. can't waste decide an anything. hour trying to decide what to watch. So yes. we used to basically we watch exclusively true crime or films starring Dwayne Johnson. Yeah, that's it. Oh. Oh. Or Woody Harrelson around oh, the circus yeah. or yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, we, that's yeah. kind of yeah. Yeah. basically it's true crime or the rock. That's that's the only things that we agree on. So we thought let's like, we wanted <laughs> to true. So we thought like how do we what do we do with that? And then we started doing this podcast and we were sort of doing it. I don't know, it'd just be a nice thing to do and we just really got into it and it's really spoken to people and like it's sort of a light-hearted take on... We kind of did on... it for ourselves. We kind of did it as... Because we work on so many other different shows and entertainment and things very different. It was yeah. our... It was almost like date day or date night. Yeah, nice. So we'd have an hour where we wouldn't talk about family or work and we'd just talk about these true crimes. And um, I remember back at... My background's journalism and yours was law. Um, people may not know I'm that. <laughs> Look at I'm, us now. I'm a lawyer, that comes in handy at any point. <laughs> while you're yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But I remember uh, at university, I was in the Murder, She Wrote Appreciation Society. Ah. And uh, did you? I, don't know if you... I was in the Lager Appreciation Society. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is a genuine one. But I just always fascinated with, with the whys and the psychology behind it. You not so much. No, Laura's obsessed with like people's backgrounds and stuff. I just want to get into it. Yeah, like how? Yeah, what happened? Right. What okay. happened? Who yeah. did it? The Why? gritty details, yeah. please. Wow. But I'm like, tell me the childhood, tell me the backstory. Exactly. How do we stop it happening again? And I, I like to tell you these facts sometimes that you're not as interested in. No, you're I'm like, not tell listening. me what happened. I don't listen to it. Um, but you're the person that's like, he did it, that's it, done. <laughs> yeah. It yeah. was him, come yeah. on. <laughs> Bag him up. Yeah, I see. <laughs> but we were just surprised. We just were kind of doing it for fun. And then uh, we were doing another true crime podcast initially, just like a once off, just for fun. Yeah. And that people really liked it. Someone got a tattoo about it on themselves. What, a picture of you two or something? And the name. And then oh. another person, wow. uh, a, a female, uh, a female, uh, uh, yeah. She was giving through childbirth and she was listening to it, was helping her relax as she was in birth. Imagine listening to our voices talking about true crime. Imagine oh, my voice while you're giving birth. <laughs> wow. I was there. No, I was there. No, I heard it. I heard what, it. That's enough for one lady. That's not a good idea. We Laura just, can confirm. We were just surprised people liked it. And then criminologists were saying they made their um They made students listen, listen to, to the it? podcast. That's, that's pretty time. They're all shy. They all, that, they, you know. yeah, they all failed. But the thing <laughs> is, it was still fun. It was just another way. I guess we look at stories in a different way. And, you know, we always, like, we do have a bit of banter. And, you know, I always want to make sure that we're not, you know, these are real people's lives. So we have mm. to respect that. But it's, it's looking at the culprits and, and how people got away with things for so long. Mm. Yeah. And sometimes the police are not so quick at picking up on things. Whereas I think if I was investigating, I would 100% get the person straight <laughs> wow. away. Wow. Wow. Your new Jess the new Jessica of Fletcher. The murders. The, the murderers. Yeah. Do I pity them? I, I mean, any of them. Has there been one? Do you know what? Because I look back and a lot of them had really horrible childhoods or yeah. something bad happened. And I'm like, why did nobody notice that? And was there a way to kind of go back and say, you know, say there's something not right here. Could we help this person? Could it have prevented murder? So I actually do sometimes pity them. And that's a good wow. question from an act as well, because I'm guessing we get into the minds of these people as well, which I'm mm. sure you've probably got into the minds of people that originally you think, oh, these people are awful. And then once you spend a day in their shoes, you're like, oh, I can see how you yeah. Yeah. got yeah. to I guess this. when you, know you play characters, and you think you play characters which aren't always nice people, the, you have I to... I think we've started accidentally uh, yeah, uh, the uh, one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they wrote with Laura Whitmore and Ian Sterling is available weekly on BBC Sounds. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Sorry. A big thank you to all of our guests tonight. And just before we go, we want to offer our thoughts to the friends and family of Terry Venables, one of England's best loved football managers. Legend. Who died at the age of 80. Yes, so many uh, wonderful tributes have been pouring in. Uh, lots of people say. Uh, another Trevor says uh, he was just such a likeable character. Nick got in touch saying, such sad news. He was a great manager and a great tactician. So lovely. He'll be greatly missed. Uh, tomorrow, I'll be back with Jennifer Saunders. Saunders? Saunders. Saunders. Nigel Havers and Dan Levy. Have a lovely evening. We'll see you then. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you.